Good morning, Periscope. Happy Friday to everyone joining. Good morning, good morning. How is everyone doing today? Good morning. I hope that everyone has had an awesome week. I know that I've had a good week. Good morning. Thank you, Wright Yasmin, for inviting your followers. Hey, good morning, J Herman 12. Good morning, Tyra, Molly. Good morning from Virginia, Detroit. Terry a Queen. Thank you, Neil, for inviting followers. Hey, Vonte, what's up, girl? Uh, good morning, Paola Rodriguez. Thank you guys for inviting your followers. You guys rock. Good morning from Chicago. Hey. Good morning. Good morning from Indy. Hey, Duchess. Good morning, Big Shot. Hello from Georgia. Good morning. Good morning from Charleston, South Carolina, St. Louis, Texas. Thank you guys for sharing. Thank you for inviting your followers. Good morning from Austin in Pensacola, Florida. I imagine it is much warmer and much nicer there, so I have to say I'm a little jealous. <laughs> Good morning, Tiffany Miller, 53. Thank you, Butterfly Denise, for inviting followers. Hello from Sweden, from Amir, Rochester, New York, in the house. What's up? Oh, thank you. To all of you who joined um, the call on Wednesday night um, when I taught on how to overcome your greatest enemy in 2016, thank you so much for joining and thank you so much for your support. I pray you guys were blessed by that message and I was honored to know how many of you actually did join. So thank you for joining. Uh, Salted Wisdom, there is no snow here right now, although I have heard it's supposed to snow this weekend. Uh, Reese, I'm so glad you enjoyed Wednesday night. Thank you, thank you. All right, so happy Friday to everybody. Thank you for joining. Feel free to invite your followers. Feel free to share the broadcast. And if you like what you hear, feel free to tap into the hearts right down there and let me know that you are enjoying what you're hearing. I would love to get to a million hearts. That would just make my day. <laughs> All right, so what I want to talk about today, um, so this past Monday I turned 25, and I told you guys that some of the periscopes that I would be doing this week would be, you know, talking about some of the things that I would like to take into, into year 25, you know, as I enter into year 25. So this morning, you know, as I was talking to God, um, I was asking the Lord, you know, what is something that is so important that I cannot compromise on that I have to take with me in year 25? Um, and what God told me was hope and the belief that you have a good future. And so at first I was a little confused, like why is it so important that I believe that I have a good future? And so then God began to speak to me, God began to give me scriptures concerning my future, and he gave me revelation about why it is so important that we have hope, and why it is so important that we truly believe that we have a good future. You know, I believe that the reason that so many people unfortunately end up selling out, ending up getting lazy, end up quitting, or giving up or settling for a watered down or cheapened version of what God's really called them to be or do or to be with or have is because they don't have the belief rooted in their heart, rooted in their mind and rooted in their spirit that what lies before them is good. You know, I think that the reason so many people sell out, the reason people become discouraged is because they don't have a true revelation of how good and how great their future is and everything that God wants to do in and through them. And I think that if we could get a true revelation of how great our future is and of what God has truly set before us, that it would stop us, you know, from encountering so many problems. So today what I want to talk about is why you must believe that you have a good future and why you must hold on to that hope and not allow anything to steal that hope or anything to steal that confidence. So I want to show you guys what God began to speak to me this morning about why it is so important that each and every one of you listening and watching on the replay believe that you have a good future. So I pray that this encourages you this morning and I pray that this hope becomes rooted and lodged in your mind and rooted and lodged in your heart and keeps you from compromising. You know, one of the greatest things about hope and about believing that you have a good future is it will stop you from settling and it will stop you from compromising. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about, I, I, talk about as it pertains to believing you have a good future and why it is so important and why it is so vital that you believe you have a good future in God is this. 
If you believe that you have a good future, and if you have that belief rooted deeply within your heart, it will hold you accountable, it will guide your steps, and it will give you a plan. You know, if you don't believe that you have a good future, then when you're about to make a destructive decision, when you're about to compromise and when you're about to quit, there's nothing that holds you accountable saying, hey, you know, don't make this bad decision. Don't quit. Don't give up because you don't know that you have such a great future. You don't have the conviction or the understanding or the revelation that what lies before you is so worth what you're going through right now this is what Philippians 3 13 through 15 says no dear brothers and sisters I have not achieved it but I focus on this one thing forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Jesus is calling us let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things so this is what we know about hope and believing that you have a good future you know Paul was able in Philippians to say that he lets go of what is behind him and is able to press on into the future and what was it that caused him to be able to press on to the future it was the revelation of the heavenly prize of which God Christ is calling us so this is why you have to understand to what God is calling you this is why you have to understand to what kind of future God is calling you you have to understand what promises lie before you because if you understand the promises that lie before you the future that lies before you what it helps you do essentially is to forget Forget the past, to forget those things that weigh you down, to throw off all that hinders and run forward to what God has called you to. So that's one of the greatest things about understanding that you have a great future is that it enables you to let go of the past. You know, so many people are bound to their past. So many people are, you know, fearful and feel disqualified, feel inadequate, or feel like they don't have enough or aren't enough to press in towards their future. But one of the greatest greatest things that knowing that what lies before you is great and having a revelation as Paul says of what Christ Jesus is calling you to so basically a revelation of your future is that it helps you let go of your past and it holds you accountable to your future because in that moment Paul was able to say I'm not going to give up I'm not going to let go and I'm not going to slide backwards because I know what Christ has called me to and I know what lies ahead of me. So I'm going to throw off all that hinders. I'm going to forget what lies ahead and I'm going to focus in on and have laser vision on what God has called me to and that gives me the energy and the push I need to be able to walk forward. That's another thing that your future will do for you is it will give you a great energy. It will give you a reason to wake up in the morning. It will give you an excitement for life. If we know what God is calling us to, the purpose and the destiny and the good future that lies ahead of us, we will have something to press towards and something to be accountable to. It makes you accountable to something. When you know the greatness that you are called to, it will keep you from compromising and it will keep you accountable because you'll say, hey, you know, this is who I see myself being and this is what I see myself doing. And you will become accountable to the future vision and that future ideal of who you are. You will become accountable. You know, if you're a woman who's believing that God has called you to one day be married or one day have a family or maybe a man who is believing the same thing, if you have that ideal of a great future that one day I will have a wonderful husband, a wonderful wife, a wonderful family, a wonderful business, a wonderful ministry, what that helps you do is it helps you not to sell out or settle for something less now, you know, to sleep around or take the easy way out because you have this vision, this ideal of who God's called you to be and what he's called you to do. And it is a standard that holds you accountable to something more. And this is one of the reasons that we have to believe that we have a good future. Another thing, and I love this one, that, ha that having the idea that you have a good future, another benefit of that is that it helps you overcome confusion. I think one of the greatest things and one of the greatest ways that the devil comes in to attack us is through confusion. He wants to make us confused about what God has called us to. He wants to get us so stuck on the temporary, so stuck on what we are facing now that we become so confused that we sell out, that we quit, that we give up, and that we settle. But one of the greatest things that knowing the great future that lies ahead of you empowers you to do is it empowers you to overcome confusion. 
And this is what Jeremiah 29 11 says. I love this scripture. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future and a well-being, not for disaster, but to give you a future and to give you a hope. So why is it, you know, that in this scripture, Jeremiah believed that he needed to tell us that God knows the plans for us that he has and that they are good. I believe that Jeremiah understood that the people needed to hear this because at times confusion would come in and try to rob them of their hope and would try to make them believe that the future that lies ahead of them because it is unknown is a scary, is a fearful. You know, a lot of people are afraid of the unknown. They are afraid of the future because they're not sure what it holds. But when you have the securing hope that the God in heaven who created the universe, who tells the sun when to rise, who tells the sun when to set, who tells the tides when to come in, when you have that assurance and blessed hope that it is the God of the universe who is not bound by time and which can make all things work together for your good, when you know that it is that God who holds your hope, who holds your future and who holds your plans, what that does is that will give you a blessed assurance and that will bind up and cast out all confusion. Ultimately, what confusion is, is confusion is fear. But the Bible tells us that perfect love casts out fear. So when you allow God with his perfect love to come and invade you with his presence and remind you that the hope that you hold, that the future that he has for you is good, it'll give you a blessed assurance. It'll cast out all fear, which in turn casts out all confusion. We cannot be overcome by confusion. We have got to overcome confusion with knowing, with having the blessed assurance that it is Christ who holds our hope and it is Christ who holds our future. A lot of us, I think, become confused because we are so afraid of being put to shame. You know, I have these dreams of traveling the world and preaching the gospel. I am no longer afraid to tell people that I know that I am called to be a bona fide preacher of the gospel, preacher of the truth, and preacher of wisdom. But sometimes I admit that confusion and fear will come in and I'll start to believe, you know what, what if I'm doing all of this and it's only to be put to shame? I'm so afraid sometimes of failure. I'm so afraid of being put to shame. You know, a lot of you know that I've gone through a terrible divorce and sometimes I can carry a lot of shame thinking, will someone ever love me again? Will someone ever accept me again? Will I ever have kids? Will I ever have a husband? I turned 25. I'm feeling kind of old, <laughs> halfway to 30. And it can be fearful. It can be confusing. And sometimes I fear shame and I fear failure. And I'm just being transparent with you guys. But what casts out this fear? What casts out this shame is the promise of God that says this, Psalms 25.3a. It's one of my favorites, and this is what it says. I love this. Are you guys ready for this? I hope this energizes you, empowers you. I'm about to run around this place because I love this scripture. Psalm 25.3a says this, no one, it doesn't say, well, some people are maybe, but it says no one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. So if I place my hope in God, and if I know that it's him who holds my future, I will never be put to shame. Amen. And another um, version of the Bible says it like this. No one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced. I'm, I'm saying some of you should shout. <laughs> some of you should run on that one. That is so encouraging. So if you place your hope in God, and this is why it is so important, so pertinent, so vital that we know that we have a good future and that we believe that because if we know we have a good future and we know who our hope is in, then we understand we will never have to experience shame and that we will never have to be disgraced. Listen to this. This is so good. Even despite the decisions that everyone else around you makes or the things that people do to you, the, the abuse, the abandonment, the rejection, the hurt, the mean words, despite all of that, you cannot be put to shame and you cannot be disgraced if your hope is in Christ. And that is so encouraging that when your hope is in Christ, even despite what other people may do to you, you will never be put to shame and you will never be disgraced. Another thing that is a product of understanding that you have a good future is this. It helps you endure 
and it keeps you from quitting. When you know who holds your future and when you know that you have a good future to come, it will energize you and it will keep you from quitting. It will keep you from giving up and it will keep you from selling out. It will also help you to have a large amount of joy and hope because this is what Romans 12, 12 says. We rejoice in this confident hope and we are patient in trouble and keep on praying. So right there, what are you able to rejoice in? You know, if you're feeling discouraged right now, if you're feeling sad right now, if you feel like quitting, feel like giving up, feel like selling out or feel like settling, my question to you is this. Do you know that you have a good future? Have you asked God to give you a revelation of the wonderful future that lies ahead of you? Who holds your hope? Because if God holds your hope, you should be able to rejoice because Romans 12, 12, 12 says, we rejoice in this confident hope. We are patient in trouble and we keep on praying. So what does that reveal to us about hope? That reveals to us that if we have our hope placed in the right thing, which is God, it will in turn give us confidence that will allow us to rejoice even when we are in trouble because that says that it allows us to be patient in trouble and keep on praying. If you are feeling weak this morning, which ultimately weakness and discouragement is what leads us to quit, is what leads us to give up, my question to you is who have you placed your hope in? Because Isaiah 40, 31 promises us this, but those who wait for the Lord, who expect and look for him and hope in him, will gain a new strength and they will renew their power. They will lift up their wings, rise up close to God, and like eagles will rise towards the sun. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. So right there, we see that if you feel weak, if you feel like you don't have power, if you feel like you don't have strength, if you're lacking hope, if you feel discouraged, my question to you is this, in who and what have you placed your hope? Is your hope in a man? Is your hope in a job? Is your hope in a person? Or, this is the one that convicts me, is your hope in yourself? You know, all my life I've been a doer, I've been a mover, I've been a shaker. I had a rough childhood which made me learn that the only person that I could hope in, place my trust in was myself. I will exhaust myself and run myself dry and end up being discouraged and weak if I place my hope in myself. So my question to you is this, you know, if you're feeling weak, is your hope in yourself or is your hope in God? Because I am human. I am flesh, I am imperfect, and we all are. So even if we place our hope in ourselves, you know, thinking, well, you know, I'm not gonna place my hope in other people or place my hope in God because I don't wanna be disappointed. I'm gonna self-protect myself by only placing my hope in me because I can control myself and control what I do. What happens is you cannot carry yourself forever. You cannot be your own source of strength forever. You need to place your hope and place your strength in God because that's when you will become renewed. That's when you will have hope and that's when you will not have to face disappointment. And this is a good one. I love this one. Another thing that knowing that you have a good future will do for you is it will help you not give in to temptation and it will help you to press past the temporary. If you don't know how great your future is, then the only thing that you would do is sell out for a watered down, cheapened version, settled version of what God's called you to do, what God's called you to be, of the promises that he's given you. And this is why it is so important that we understand the hope that lies before us, the promises that lie before us, the great future that lies before us. Because when I know that God has a wonderful husband for me, then when someone comes up to me spitting game, looking kind of pretty, or or whatever I say you know what I see you and I see this temptation and I'm not moved because I know God has someone better for me you know when my job offers me a wonderful you know promotion but it's gonna take me working 60 to 70 hours a week which is gonna have to make me compromise the ministry that God's called me to do on the side I can say no to that temptation and no to that little bit of money because I know that one day God has called me to be a millionaire has called me to be a kingdom entrepreneur has called me to be you know a king a wealth resource for the kingdom in order to back and do what he wants to see done on earth as it is in heaven so I can say mm, no thanks to that promotion because I know that ultimately
ultimately every good and perfect thing comes from God and I know the future that I have so this little light and temporary this little flashy thing that the devil's trying to get me to sell out for no thank you so what the devil will do is he'll come and give you a watered down version of what God has really called you to I've been using this example a lot but I think it's so key and I think it's such a good example. You know, ultimately Jesus' whole point in coming to the earth was to save mankind from the wages of sin, to go to the cross, to resurrect as the risen son and as the risen king and to rule over all people. But before he was able to get to the cross, when he was in the desert being tempted by the devil, the devil flashed something shiny in front of him and gave him the ability to get what God was going to give him in a watered down version and not have to go to the cross. The devil ultimately gave Jesus a way out of the cross. He said, all you got to do is bow down to me and see all of this. It will be yours and you can rule over all of it. But Jesus, because he had a blessed assurance and a blessed hope that what God had called him to would eventually happen, because he was not willing to avoid the cross, because he knew that what he had been called to do could only happen and could only truly be his if he went through the process of the cross, he was able to say no to the devil's flashy little temptation and say, you know what, no thank you, because I know I have to go to the cross to get ultimately what I came to this earth for, which wasn't rulership, with which wasn't dominion but was ultimately to forgive people and to be the to be the uh, sacrifice so that they could be forgiven for the wages of sin so that they could overcome you know a fleshly and carnal death so what we have to understand is you know Jesus knew what he was called to Jesus knew that he had to go to the cross and that it couldn't be accomplished apart from the cross so when he was hungry when his flesh was aching and the devil came to him and put something flashy in front of him he was able to say no thank you because he knew the hope the future and the promises that lied before him and that's another thing that having a hope and knowing who holds your future will do for you is it will help you not sell out this is what hebrews six nineteen says it says this hope or this confident assurance we have as an anchor of the soul so what hope does what who knowing your future who holds your future does is it gives you an anchor you know the Bible tells us not to be double-minded and not to be tossed to and fro by the waves of life but what is it that is able to anchor us so that we don't have a double mind and so that we aren't uh, thrown back and forth by the waves of life by the emotions of life and by even the temptations of life it is hope that is the anchor of our soul it cannot and listen to this listen to what the rest of the verse says i love it it cannot slip and it cannot break down under whatever pressure bears upon it it is a safe and steadfast hope that enters within the veil of the heavenly temple to the most holy place into the very presence that god dwells that's beautiful I mean, if I said nothing else, if I just got on and read that one scripture, everyone should run, shout, jump, and be good for the day. Because what it says is that hope, so knowing what God has called you to, knowing the promises of God, knowing what lies before you will keep you from giving up, will keep you from selling out, and it will anchor you. Because it is an anchor as a soul that cannot slip and cannot break down under the pressure that bears upon it. Hebrews 11.1 1 says this, faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. So this is what hope does. This is what having a true revelation of who God has called you to be, what he's called you to do, about the promises he has, believing that you have a good future will do. This is what it does. I love this. Even in a moment, when what you can see looks good, if you know that you have a great future, you are able to press past the seemingly good, holding on to the hope that what is to come is actually great and greater than that seemingly good. So why is it in Hebrews 11.1, 1, why did they feel like the need to tell us that hope is hoping for what we actually can't see will actually happen? It's because they knew that the devil would offer us something that we actually could see that would look good, but what hope does, what faith does is it says, hey, what the devil is flashing before me, it looks seemingly good. 
It looks appearingly good, but I know that what God for has for me is actually great. So I'm going to pass up this seemingly good and go on and press towards what is actually great. And that's what faith does. And that's what hope does for us. It helps us press on to what is unseen, knowing that what is unseen is greater than what can be seen. And this is why it helps us not to give in to temptation. It helps us press on past the temporary, knowing who holds our hope and knowing where our future is, what our future promises are. And the last thing that I believe that knowing what kind of future you have and how great your future is will do for you is this. It's so good and it's so simple and it's so great. It will give you life and it will give you a reason to wake up. If you have a hard time getting excited for life, if you have a hard time waking up in the morning, if you have a hard time finding motivation to do what it is that God has called you to do, my question to you would be this. Do you know how great of a future lies before you if you are willing to put in the work? Do you know how exciting your future is? How hopeful your future is? Do you know the God of the universe who holds your future in his hands? And in whom or in what have you placed your hope? Because if your hope is in God, if you know the great future to which he has called you, you should jump up out of bed. You know, I love, there's this quote, this little meme that goes around on Facebook that says, have a vision so big and so great that it makes you want to jump out out of bed in the morning. Well, to me, you know, I've dated some wonderful, good looking men. I've been, you know, a part of, I've had a wonderful corporate job. You know, I've had a lot of money, been to some cool clubs. You know, I've had wonderful uh, clothes, outfits, great food. I mean, whatever you can want, wonderful friends. None of those things make me jump out of bed. Alcohol, drugs, none of those things made me jump out of bed or excited for life. But I have gotten a taste and seen a glimpse of his glory and of his goodness. And he has revealed to me the wonderful future to which he has called me. And that, my friends, is what makes me jump out of bed excited in the morning. This is what Romans 15, 13 tells us. I pray that God, and this is my prayer for you guys today. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. <laughs> Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if you want to overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit, if you want to jump up out of bed in the morning and look yourself in the mirror and say what's up and be excited, if you want to whip a nene on them, if you want to be excited, you know, some people I think when their alarm goes off in the morning, they're like, ugh, another day, really? Me, when my alarm goes off in the morning, I'm like, thank you, God, for life. Thank you for breathing the breath of air into me. Thank you for giving me the gift of life. Thank you that I'm one step closer to every promise, one step closer to my future, one step closer to greatness. I get excited. I usually dance my way out of bed. People ask me, oh, how are you a morning person? My personal opinion, again, just my personal opinion, I think that everyone should be a morning person. I think that everyone should be excited to wake up. If you aren't excited to wake up, why are you alive? Why are you living? And why aren't you excited? I have a confident hope that makes me overflow with the power of the Holy Spirit and fills me with complete peace and complete joy because I trust in him. You can have that same joy, same hope, same peace if you trust in him and hope in him. You know, um, the Bible tells us that hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. So if you feel like you are have um, a deferred heart or a, or a sickened heart, or you know what the Bible says, unrelenting disappointment gives you a heart that is sick. So if you have a sick heart, if you feel like you're facing unrelenting disappointment, if you feel like you are sick or heartbroken, my question to you is who have you put your hope in? Because the Bible says on the contrary, that a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. So when you have your hope in God, it's a tree of life. It will make you excited to wake up in the morning. It'll give you a reason to wake up. It'll make you a happy person. So this is my ultimate question to you guys this morning. Who holds your hope? What do you believe about your future? Have you placed your future, your excitement, your hope, your identity in a man? Or have you placed your future and your excitement and your joy in the Lord? Do, are you excited to get up in the morning? Are you excited about your future? Or are you currently contemplating selling out? Are you currently contemplating settling? Are you currently contemplating, you know, settling for a cheapened, watered down version of God's promises for you? Or who he's called you to be or what he's called you to do? I pray 
that you are not. And I pray that you are filled with hope. And I pray, you know what? Let's say that you just aren't excited right now. That's okay. Let's say that you don't know what your future is or what God holds for you. That's okay. But then my challenge to you guys today, as my Periscope was titled, is to believe that you have a good future. And what that requires is that you press into the place of God, press into the presence of God, and ask Him, what is in my future? God, I place my hope in you, not in a man, not in a husband, not in a wife, not in anything other than you. I place my hope in you, not in a business, not in a ministry, not in a platform, not in fame, fortune, money, cars, dollar bills, but I place my hope in you. So if you're lacking excitement, lacking hope, if you're sad, discouraged, I encourage you on this Friday and throughout this weekend to press into the presence of God and ask him to give you a revelation of your future. Because all I know is that my future looks bright. My future looks exciting. My future looks awesome. And that's why when these little flashy temptations come, I say, mm, no thanks. I don't want to sell out. I'm not going to sell out for that momentary uh, goodness to my flesh. I'm not going to settle or I'm not going to please my flesh for one second because I know that what lies in my future is so much better than what may look good for the momentary right now. When I get, you know, when I feel discouraged and feel like quitting, feel like selling out, feel like giving up. I am what encourages me, what energizes me, and what gives me the, the endurance to keep going is the revelation I have and the belief I have that my future is good. So that's it for today. I pray that you guys are encouraged by this. You know, if you are someone that struggles with a negative mind or with, you know, not even believing good thoughts about your future, I actually have something that could help you. If you go to my website, and I encourage all of you to go and subscribe to my website, www.wisdomisthenewblack.com. If you go to, the, to, go to that website, at the top of that site are a few tabs, and one of those tabs says resources. And if you highlight the resource tab, it'll say 21 Day Negativity Detox. If you click on that, that will take you to what I have written and published. I have published a 21 Day Negativity Detox. It's a 32 page PDF that will help you. It's basically a 21 day devotional full of scripture, full of truth, and full of teaching you how to get rid of negative thoughts and have positive thoughts through scripture, the renewing of your mind, and it helps you to build hope. So if you feel like, I don't know how to do this, I have a 21 day resource that you can go purchase for only $10, 10 bucks, that's cheap, to change your life, to give you hope, to give you a future. And it will completely renew your mind. It will detox you from all negative thoughts and give you positive thoughts. So make sure you guys follow me on Facebook. Uh, you can follow me on my personal Facebook, Monica Vandenied, on my um, business Facebook, Wisdom is the New Black. You can follow me on uh, Instagram, um, you know, Wisdom is the New Black. Make sure you follow me on Periscope. If you want to see more of my messages, you can go to YouTube, type in my first and last name, and you can find some more messages to encourage you. So. Thank you guys so much for joining. I have some exciting things coming up for next week's Sunrise Scope. So I hope that I will see you guys back here next Monday for Monday's Sunrise Scope series. I'm going to announce what the series is. And um, you can go to... If you click on the actual pro someone said if you click on the actual um, product page, it's going to be a blank sample page. But if you just if you just hover your mouse over the products, it'll give you a drop down for the 21 day detox. And if you're having issues finding it, just inbox me or email me. So. Um, is there a replay uh, for the call that I did? Um, for the call that I did Wednesday, they're supposed to send me the recording of that, and then I'll put it on YouTube, and I'll probably put it on my website as well so you can hear it. So, All right, well, I love you guys. Have a blessed Friday. I will see you Monday at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time for our Sunrise Scopes. Have a blessed weekend. I will be taking time tomorrow morning. Saturday morning is my favorite day of the week. I get up early, spend a few hours with God, journal, write down what he's telling me. I pray you guys will spend time with God tomorrow morning as well. Have a blessed weekend. Enjoy church on Sunday. Get some rest. Take care of yourself. Renew your hope. And I will see you guys Monday for Monday's Sunrise Scopes. I love you guys and be blessed. See you later. Have a great Friday. Bye.